We're about to fill up this 53 foot truck with about 15 tons of antique cannons. So let's look in the truck and see what it looks like. Looks like there's a lot of space in here, but we've got everything laid out inside so that it's laid out the way it's going in the truck and there will be no space left in the truck when we get done. So let's go inside and look at some of the uh, cannons, the way they're laid out. Here are some of the first items going in. A couple of uh, Civil War era cannon wheels. I think they're 60 inches or 5 feet tall. Very heavy. They've already got tags on them for the auction company. The auction's in October. And uh, James D. Julia is the auctioneer. And they're going to sell all these cannons at auction in October. We'll go back. We're in the Springfield Arsenal, uh, one of their warehouses now. And uh, see it's filled with all kinds of munitions and so forth that they normally sell. But now they're going to be selling mini cannons. And uh, they're here for us to look at. This is the uh, setup. We made a trailer outline on the warehouse floor that's uh, 53 feet long and 98 inches wide. The same thing as we think the inside of the trailer is and uh, marked it off. See the mark? And uh, this is one item. It's a 10 inch siege mortar, model 1861. There's a three inch Parrot rifle. A Dahlgren boathouse or carriage. The barrel is already packed in the back here. And there's a Navy uh, breech loading howitzer, breech loading rifle complete. And here are the barrels that have been taken off. We've got a couple of uh, military six pounders, one iron, one bronze. We've got a probably Revolutionary War four pounder naval gun here, a couple of bronze mortars. Got various kinds of uh, cannons down here, packed and strapped. Uh, same thing over there. Line throwing gun sitting on top of uh, a couple other guns here. Uh, many nice cannons under that cardboard. Uh, this is uh, some nice cannons that get their own boxes. And underneath, there are uh, three mountain howitzers and a couple other cannons, bronze cannons on top of them, all separated by cardboard. Here's another pallet with a couple bronze guns and one steel gun on it at least. Another pallet with a uh, an early harpoon gun and the Dahlgren boat howitzer barrel. Here's one with uh, a two pounder gun aid and a line throwing gun taken apart and a earlier line throwing gun in the middle. Here's a very nice carriage that we uh, wanted to cover up pretty well. We didn't want any scratches on it because it's mahogany. Mahogany carriage for a Dutch Falconet. And under here in this packing case is the uh, barrel for the Dutch Falconet. Here's a uh, Krupp carriage circa 1906, the barrel's already at the auctioneer. That's going to be put in in place of this pallet, which has to move up front. Um, in this box, we've got many small gun carriages in this tri wall container. We've got more gun carriages in this one and on that one. Uh, we've got some big model cannons in this crate and uh, a couple of uh, small arm type things, antique on top. Here we've got a couple of Hotchkiss guns, two pounders from uh, the 1880s period. Uh, in here we have a whole bunch of model cannons individually packed in boxes and so forth. Uh, actually, here are the model cannons, most of them, in this stack. Uh, we get a very nice Spanish mortar in this box.
very historic Spanish mortar all packed away and uh, with moving blankets and styrofoam and so forth, cardboard in this box sealed up. So you can look up the sides and uh, see how we've divided this into a trailer load from our other merchandise storage. And uh, we'll just take another look at that all the way along. So it's uh, again 53 feet long and 98 inches wide. It's really the only way we could tell what we could get into the trailer. One trailer load uh, was to lay it out in a trailer diagram. And you see these uh, green marks mark the end of the trailer and the corners of the trailer. So there you go. We'll take another look. See it goes way up there. 53 feet. And we've been working on this for weeks and weeks. Getting everything over here in one warehouse from the other warehouses and storage areas. And uh, getting it all on pallets. And getting it packed up. And protected. These uh, pallets uh, are placeholders for the large uh, six pounder wheels which we didn't feel we needed to bring over here as long as we had something to show where they'd go. And the big six pounder carriage which is over here is going to go alongside the side of the trailer without being separately packed. It's just so huge it's like uh, 10 feet long and weighs about a thousand pounds or more and uh, we didn't see any way to give that a separate box. These are some items that are going in the uh, first auction also, but they didn't make the first truck. There's a naval gun that's a 42 millimeter Maxim Nordenfeld from 1896. Um, here's a, a Krupp field gun, 75 millimeter, in excellent condition and the barrel to it is down there. Uh, the rifling is good, it's uh, shootable. And again, it's antique, 1893. So uh, there are no laws restricting individuals in the US from having that. Uh, same thing applies to this uh, Krupp 53 millimeter rapid fire field gun, which we'd better move over here to get. Uh, this is an antique. Uh, takes uh, uh, fixed ammunition, it's rapid fire, it's complete, all the breech mechanism and everything is uh, in there and ready to go for any of you shooters. It's got a kind of a neat uh, top carriage traverse. For instance, if you want to change the deflection of the uh, line of uh, fire, all you have to do is turn that wheel and the whole top part of the carriage up here moves on that uh, machine table right here. Move this way and that way to change your point of aim. And of course elevation is typically with an elevating screw. And this piece was uh, built at Grusenberg in Germany in 1891. It also has drum brakes. That's the brake handle when you pull it the big drum brakes lock up and will prevent the piece from uh, recoiling very far when you fire it or running down a hill if you're going down a hill. Kind of a neat feature of that piece. We've got a couple others that uh, didn't make the truckload but will go soon. We've got uh, the only surviving Treadwell six pounder gun made in 1844, one of eight that were tested by the U.S. Army um, at Fort Monroe Arsenal, I think, in uh, Virginia in 1844. They were fired extensively and uh, they did pretty well. This is one of the better pieces that's uh, not making this truckload. Is a Spanish eight-pounder field gun dated 1803, I think it is, made in Seville got a beautiful coat of arms where it was made in the exact day is right there the coat of arms of Carlos IV of Spain is here it weighs about 
1,400 pounds, and it was a standard type Gribaball system field gun of the era. Its name is El Congrejo, which means the crab. Uh, the Spanish christened all their bronze artillery pieces, and this one was no exception. So you get to meet the crab. We also have uh, the, the iron carriage irons that fit this piece. Uh, they're not here right now, but they'll be going to the auction house as well. So that's it. We'll take one more quick look down here at uh, the loadout and some of the people who are going to help us load it. Down one side, see the 10 inch mortar and the 3 inch parrot and some of the big carriages. We're going to put uh, dunnage and padding uh, at any place where anything could possibly rub. So that's it for now, folks. Bye. Okay, so here is the truck after we got it all filled. Right to the tailgate. With uh, 15 tons of cannons and carriages and mortars and howitzers, rifle guns, breech loaders, muzzle loaders whatever have you okay this is the 53 foot truck so there you go